Welcome to the LTE downlink OFDMA tutorial. In the following tutorial, we'll learn how LTE uses OFDMA for providing high data rate through the downlink radio channel while copying with the multipass and selective fading effects. We'll learn how the LTE downlink radio frame is structured and how radio resources are delivered in time and frequency domains. In order to understand why subcarriers are required at all, let's look at the way that data bits are delivered. Data bits are arranged in symbols. Each symbol includes certain number of uh, bits. Let's take an example. Assume that we have symbols in which their duration is 0.5 microsecond. It means that the symbol rate is 2 mega samples per second. Let's assume that we use, for each symbol, we use 6 bits. In this case, the data rate, the bit rate, will be 6, 6 bits, multiplied by the symbol rate, by 2 megabits, sorry, by 2 mega samples per second. This will provide 12 megabits per second. The maximum number of data bits per symbol is limited by the noise. In advanced mobile wireless protocols, when high SINR exists, a maximum of 6 bits per symbol can be used. Since the number of bits per symbol is limited by noise, one may think about increasing the bit rate by increasing the symbol rate, or in other words, by shortening the symbol time. However, there is a practical limit to the extent that symbols can be shortened. This limitation is due to the multipass that exists in the mobile wireless networks and create the phenomena called delay spread, which in its turn might cause inter-symbol interference. Due to multipass, each symbol transmitted by the transmitter is received multiple times at the receiver. This creates an impact of an echo. The duration of the echo is called delay spread. As we can see in this slide, wherever the transmitter transmits a single symbol, this symbol goes through multiple passes and actually receives the receiver multiple times in multiple duplications. The time difference between the uh, first pass and the last pass is, pass is, deter is determined by the environment. It, deter it is determined by how close the structures, the reflecting structures are. For example, in an urban environment where the uh, reflections may come from uh, building, cars or trucks, the typical delay spread may be in the range of 5 to 10 microseconds. Let's see now how delay spread and multipass create intersymbol interference. The transmitter in this figure transmits a series of symbols, S1, S2, S3, and S4. These symbols are propagated to the three possible paths according to this figure, A, B, and C. And they are received in the receiver, in the car, overlapped on each other. So it's easy to see that at, some, at certain points, multiple symbols, symbols are being received simultaneously. This is inter-symbol interference. Wireless networks coped with this problem for many years. It's, this is not a new problem. The way that wireless networks used to cope with uh, the uh, delay spread, multipass, and inter-symbol phenomena was by the use of equalizer. An equalizer is actually a filter, a digital filter, um, implemented by DSP techniques. As long as the data rates that had to be processed were relatively low, below 2, 3, or even 5 megabits per second, the implementation of the equalizer in terms of processing power was not an issue. But when high data rates need to be processed by the radio, higher and higher uh, processing power is required as demonstrated by this figure. It can also be seen that when data rate gets higher, the processing power required for implementing OFDM remains slow. And this is the main advantage of OFDM over 
techniques that are based on equalizer. So if we give up the equalizer, what can we do? So we know that the impact of the delay spread and the inter-symbol interference depends on the duration of the symbol. If the symbols are short, the impact of the delay spread is significant, as shown at the upper figure of this slide. But if we'll extend the uh, duration of the symbol significantly, then most of it will not be impacted by the delay spread. Only the beginning of the symbol will be impacted by the delay spread, but most of the uh, duration of the symbol will remain unimpacted. But there is a drawback, there is a drawback in extending the duration of the symbol. Let's assume that we would like to avoid inter-symbol interference by extending the duration of the symbol significantly above the delay spread. And let's assume that the delay spread is in the magnitude of 5 to 10 microseconds, so we'll extend the symbol rate to 50 microseconds. So let's check what may be the maximum data rate that we can achieve by a, five, by a 50 microsecond symbol uh, duration. Let's assume that we can uh, work with 64 QAM, which means 60 bits per symbol. And since the symbol rate, since the uh, symbol duration is 50 microsecond, the symbol rate will be 20 kilo symbols per second we'll multiply it by six bits and we'll get the maximum data rate of 120 kilobits per second. This is definitely not enough for a modern communication system. So what does FDM do? FDM compensate for the fact that the symbol rate was uh, reduced due to the extension of the symbol duration and adds parallel subcarriers that each of them is modulated by a portion by the portion of a data. So in this example, we see uh, six subcarriers that are that are used, and of course, higher number of subcarriers uh, can can also be used. And in fact, in uh, LTE, uh, 100, 300, 500, and some, in some cases, in some channel bandwidths, even more than 1,000 subcarriers can be used. So let's take an example. Let's take the same situation where we had a symbol duration of 50 microseconds. And let's assume now that we use only 12 subcarriers instead of one. In this case, the data rate will be uh, calculated according to the following uh, procedure. The, each of the subcarriers can carry six bits. We'll multiply these six bits by a number of, of uh, subcarriers, so it's 72 bits for each, uh, for each symbol. And we'll multiply it by 20 kilo symbols per second, which is the symbol rate, and we'll get 1,440 kilobits per second. This is significantly higher than the 120 kilobits per second that we saw earlier. So this is the basis for OFDM. OFDM delivers data in two dimensions, in time dimension, in LTE symbols in time dimension, and in the frequency dimension in subcarriers. The OFDM is not a new technology. It is well known for many years, and actually it is used also in ADSL. In OFDM, in each symbol, all frequency resources, all subcarriers, are actually allocated for a single user, as can be seen at this, uh, at this slide. At each time frame, at each symbol, only one user can be served. OFDMA, took it one step further and actually enables to share each time symbol between multiple users, as can be seen at this figure, at the right side of this uh, slide. For example, at the first symbol, the first symbol from left, there is allocation for the yellow subscriber, for the 
a light blue subscriber and for the blue subscriber. And in the next um, symbol, there is a location for the green subscriber, for the light blue subscriber, and for the blue subscriber, and so on. So by, by dividing also the frequency dimension between multiple users, higher granularity can be achieved and the radio resources can be used more effectively. So let's have a look now on the uh, LTE FDD radio frame. So in the time domain, data is transmitted to the user in a radio frame. The radio frame is comprised of 20 uh, subframes, and each subframe is made out of two time slots. Each time slot includes six or seven LTE symbols. At the lower part of this slide, we uh, see the same idea in two dimensions, in the time dimension and in the frequency dimension as well. There is a zoom in on one of the LTE symbols where the uh, picture is showing also the subcarriers that are uh, providing the data at that symbol. Before we continue, it should be worth mentioning the cyclic prefix. The cyclic prefix is actually a guard band that is made between the LTE symbols. This guard band is required in order to cope with intra-symbol interference. We were able to get rid of the intra-symbol interference by extending the duration of the symbol, but we cannot really get rid from the uh, um, intra-symbol interference unless we'll insert the cyclic prefix. So the cyclic prefix actually have two elements. The one is, is a guard band. It's a guard band which its duration is in the magnitude of the delay spread. And another action made with the cyclic prefix is actually the duplication of the cyclic prefix from the beginning of the symbol to the end of the symbol. This is made in order to assist the receiver, the correlators in the receiver, to cope with the intra-symbol interference. So LTE defines two lengths of uh, cyclic prefix. The short one, which is called normal cyclic prefix, is 4.7 microsecond. And this is more suitable for urban environment where the reflections that create the multipass come from relatively short distances in a magnitude of one kilometer or two. But the LT defines another length of cyclic prefix, and this is a cyclic, pre cyclic prefix of 16.67 microseconds. And this can be used in rural areas where the reflections that create the multipass arrives from relatively long distances, like five kilometers or so. So let's have a look now at the structure of the radio frame in two dimensions. In the time dimension, where we can identify the time slot and the LTE symbols, and in the frequency dimension, where we can identify the subcarriers. The smallest amount of data that we can identify here is called resource element, RE. And it is made out of one LTE symbol and one subcarrier, modulated by some amount of bits. The amount of bits that can be put or can be incorporated into a, a single resource element depends on the modulation scheme that can be used at a certain moment. It depends on the channel quality. In case of QPSK modulation, a resource element will contain two bits. In case of 64 QAM, the resource element will contain six bits. So let's take an example that will demonstrate how many bits can be provided by the 
uh, radio channel. In reality, the LTE radio does not really deal with a single resource element when data, when user data uh, delivery is concerned. Where user data delivery is concerned, the radio manages a larger quantity of data, which is called the physical resource block, the PRB. The PRB is constructed, is made out of 12 subcarriers and six or seven time slots. It would be seven time slots in, in case that a short cyclic prefix is used, and it would be six time slots per physical resource block in case that long cyclic prefix is used. So let's, let's take an example now to see how many bits we may deliver or we can deliver through a, a single physical resource block. So let's assume that a system, use, a system uses a short cyclic prefix. It means that it has seven time slots in each physical, uh, sorry, six LTE symbols in each physical resource block. And let's also assume that 16 QAM is used. It means that on, in each resource element, four bits will be incorporated. So in the overall, the number of bits for a physical resource block where 16 QAM modulation scheme is used and short cyclic prefix is used can be calculated by the number of resource elements multiplied by the number of bit per resource element. So in a case of short cyclic prefix, we'll have 12 subcarriers multiplied by 7 LTE symbols. This will give us 84 uh, resource elements. And if we'll multiply it by 4 bits per resource element, we'll get 336 bits per physical resource block. To conclude this session, let's demonstrate now how the maximum data rate of the physical layer can be calculated. The maximum peak data rate depends, of course, on the channel bandwidth. As higher as the channel bandwidth, more subcarriers can be used. So, for example, in the case of 5 MHz channel bandwidth, 300 subcarriers can be uh, used. Let's also assume that we work in perfect radio conditions and the high SINR allows us to use 64 QA modulation, which means that every symbol will include now six bits. So the total bits on all subcarriers for a duration of a symbol can be calculated by multiplying the number of subcarriers, 300 by six. This will give us 1800 bits per one symbol. Since the duration of the symbol is 71.4 microsecond in a case of short cyclic prefix, we have a new LTE symbol every 71.4 microsecond. So in order to calculate the data rate, we'll divide the 1800 bits by 71.4 microsecond and we'll get the 25.2 megabits per second. It is important to uh, mention that this is the maximum peak theoretical data rate where all resources are actually allocated to a single user and the channel conditions are perfect, meaning allow us to use the highest modulation scheme. No coding uh, was taken into consideration and no overhead was taken into consideration. But this is the way that maximum peak data rate of the physical uh, layer is calculated. This concludes this session. Hope you enjoyed it. We welcome you to look for our other tutorials on LTE and on other topics.